and then the Skype wasn't working. Anyway, I'm here now. So, Hanan and Dope and Lynn. Hello. Hello, 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 Marianne. Hello. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Dope. Hi, Hi Lynn. Hello, 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 everyone. Okay, so, touching the void. Did you have a chance to have a look at the vocabulary that I sent to you yesterday? Yeah. Yes. So you can see that there's some quite interesting vocabulary that is very specific to mountaineering. So I wouldn't worry too much. I have seen the movie also. Sorry? I have seen the movie also. You've seen the movie, great. I was actually listening to the movie and some of the vocabulary when they were speaking, I, I, I took note of it to give to you so that you had a chance to have a look at it. For me, the most interesting word was the brew, like they, uh, when they melt the uh, on a high altitude, when they melt the snow, they call this experience as uh, brew. Sorry, they, they mm. did what? Brew. Brew. Brew? It's like, yeah, when you want to prepare tea, for example, you Oh, brew. yes, yes, yeah. yes. And when they melt the snow, they quote it as a brew. Okay, but we call it a brew anyway. In London, in Yorkshire, a brew is another term we use to mean making a cup of tea. OK, because the tea actually has to brew. It actually has to stay a few minutes in the hot water. And when something is is like steeping or infusing in the water, we call that brewing. We also brew beer, but uh, we brew tea as well. And so these two climbers, these two mountaineers are very typical Brits in that respect. They drink lots of tea. OK, so Nidhi, let's hope maybe today your connection is a little bit better. <laughs> can you hear me? Hi. Yes, we can hear you clearly today. So maybe today it's... <gasps> what about me? Yeah. Can you hear me clearly, madam? <laughs> we no, dope, we cannot hear you. It's very clearly, though. <laughs> in case Nidhi's connection decides to go on strike a bit later, Nidhi, why don't you start us off? Yeah, thanks. You know my connection better now. Okay, thanks yes. for giving me a chance. <laughs> okay. Touching the Void. Touching the Void is a 1988 book by Joe Simpson, recounting his and Simon Yates' successful but disastrous and nearly fatal climb of the 6,344 meter. 20,080. 813 foot. Suela Grande in the Peruvian Andes in 1985. The book won the 1989 Boardman Tasker Prize for Mountain Literature and the 1989 Ansia Book Award. Simpson and Yates reached the summit of the previously unclimbed vast face of Suela Grande. Upon descent, Simpson slipped down an ice cliff and landed, awkwardly crushing his tibia into his knee joint, thus breaking his right leg. The pair, whose trip had already taken longer than they intended due to bad weather on the ascent, had run out of fuel for their stove and could not melt ice or snow for drinking water. With bad with bad weather closing in and daylight fading, they needed to descend quickly to the glacier about 3,000 feet below. Okay, very good. Any vocabulary there that you're not sure about? I think uh, No, I think you have already shared the vocabulary one is tibia. That is a one kind of bo uh, bone between joint. Okay. The knee. Very good. So your connection is good today and you also read perfectly. Thank you, Nidhi. OK. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Let's have a look here. So, Hernan, would you like to read the next? Sure. 
Thank you. Uh, let's see. From Yates. Yates proceeds to lower Simpson. Yes, um, that's right. All right. Thank you. Yates pro proceeded to lower Simpson off the north ridge by tying two 150 foot length of rope together to make one 300 foot rope. However, because the two ropes were tied together, the knot couldn't go through the belay plate. Simpson would have stand on his good left leg to give Yates enough slack to unclip the rope in order to thread uh, the rope back through the lowering device with the knot on the other side. With storm, storm conditions worsening and darkness upon them, Yates inadvertently lowered Simpson off a cliff. Because Yates was sitting higher up the mountain, he could not see nor hear Simpson. He could only feel that Simpson, sorry, that Simpson had all his weight on the rope. Simpson attempted to ascend the rope using a Prusik knot. Great, thank you. So there I've put a couple of pictures to show what they're talking about here because this is very technical uh, climbing language. Okay. Um, any of us have to see that? Inadvertently. That either. Sorry, I, we, I think that we couldn't hear you, but you, if you say inadvertently. Dope. What does that uh, mean? Inadvertently, when you uh, uh, you have done something uh, that you, you didn't want to do, it's uh, it's just uh, it's a result of something. Yes. Yeah. Favorable condition. It's when you um without really um a sort of almost like by accident. Yeah. So he, um, without knowing, by accident, he lowered Simpson off a cliff. Okay, so he didn't have any idea because he didn't know, he couldn't see anything. Okay. Okay, um, Dope, would you like to read the next section, please? However, because his hands were badly uh, forbidden, he was unable to tie the knot properly and accidentally dropped one of the cords required to ascend the rope. The pair were stuck in the very bad situation. Simpson couldn't climb up the rope, yet couldn't pull him back up. The cliff was too high for Simpson to be lowered down, and they couldn't communicate. They remained in his this position for some time until it was Abias, the yells that the snow around uh, his belay uh, sit or was about to give out. Because the pair was tied together, they would both be pulled to the death. Yelts had, uh, had to make um, a hard decision to cut the rope in order to save his own life. Doing so may very well uh, have also saved Simpson's life, as he would have died of exposure of, uh, of he, if he had been left to hang in the strong freezing wind for much longer. Even Yates cut the rope, Simpson plumbed down the cliff and into the deep crevice, exhausted and suffering from the hypothermia. Yates dug himself a snow, a snow cave to wait out a storm. Next day, Yelt carried on descending the mountain by himself. When he reached the crevasse, he realized the situation that Simpson had been and uh, what had happened when he cut the rope after uh, calling for Simpson and hearing no reply. Yelts made the assumption that Simpson had died and so continued down the mountain alone. Very good. Okay, dope. <clears throat> what does it mean by plummeted? No, I do not want to say I want to talk. So that's the fall down paragraph. suddenly. Sorry, Nidhi. 
fall down suddenly? Yes, exactly. So he fell down suddenly. Okay, he fell down the cliff into a deep crevasse. Did you have a look to see what um, what the dictionary said about crevasse? Do you all understand crevasse? Just a crack. Yes, it's a it's a crack. Yeah, crack usually in the snow or the ice. In a glacier, you find many mm -hmm. crevasses. That's a huge one. <laughs> huge one. And they sometimes move. So sometimes they open and then they suddenly close again. So it's very, very dangerous. Yeah. Okay. So did you all get a chance to actually see the movie? I know Dave did. Did, he, did you see the movie? No? Okay, because the link no. is up there this and it's just... well worth listening to because it's a documentary and it's the two climbers recounting their story. They're both British climbers with very little accent. It's very easy to understand them, especially if you've checked out the, the vocabulary because they use that vocabulary quite a bit. But if you've already checked it out, we'll find it quite they don't speak very fast so it's actually quite good to listen to okay Nidhi would you like to read the next section here yeah definitely I want okay uh, Simpson so sorry, however sorry, 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 uh, sorry no, yeah I, I just for, forgot to ask what is belay belay well up at the beginning you stop um the um uh, a diagram. Stop. The Billet means to stop. Yes, it's 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 like a. If you look up, scroll up to where the two pictures are. So one of the pictures has got several different kinds of relays. So there are many. Purpose. When you close down, how fast the rope will be let out. So when you're climbing, you use these belays so that you, it takes most of the weight. So it's very easy to let yourself down. Your own weight is heavy, but because these belays slow down the movement of the rope, it's actually very easy. So you can see there are five belays and they are But the uh, most simple belay is the one at the top left hand corner. I think I've used that type of belay. I haven't used the other types. So I've used a very simple one where you just thread the rope through and it makes it run much more slowly. Does that answer your question, Doke? Maybe I just. Uh... Don't get you clear because your connection is off. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you can't hear me very clearly. <laughs> no. Okay, I need to stick my nose in my screen and maybe you can hear me no, better. No, it, it won't help. It won't help. <laughs> just uh, your voice just disappear and appear in a second. Oh. Yeah, in between you were breaking up. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need to change my internet provider if they can't provide me with a good connection. <laughs> okay. Have you done mountaining on Himalayas, uh, Marian? I haven't been mountaineering. I've only been trekking. Okay. Climbing. I don't. I've I've learned how to climb, but I've only climbed on very low rocks mainly in Derbyshire Ooh. and a little bit in Wales and Ooh. I'm not really the right build I'm a bit heavy I don't have long arms or long legs okay <laughs> so, actually it's quite tough for a shorty like me because usually the <laughs> handholds are just a few inches too far and I don't have the courage to leap to jump so the climbers who are very good usually are able to just jump at the handholds. Whereas I'm a bit okay. scared. I like to hold on to it all the way. So that means that it's quite difficult. 
So one time in Wales on the sea cliffs, it was quite easy because there were lots of handholds. So I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I don't mind abseiling. Now, I don't know if you know the word to abseil. No. When you abseil, you're using one of those belay plates and you thread the rope around and then you pass it around your body and you can lower yourself off slowly and all you have is the rope. So you're actually like dangling on this rope. Okay. Okay. Rafael. And okay. It's, it's Rafael. By tying rope around your uh, way, well, waist. Well, you don't even tie like, it around yourself because you're using the belay to slowly let okay. the rope out so that you go down. You can't go up, you can only go down. Have you ever used this, Hanan? Have you ever used a... I mean, uh, if, this, if this is rappelling, yes, I did it. Yes, it's the same. <laughs> it's yes, like, yes, I did it. Yeah. Dope, have you ever done that, where you've let yourself down on a rope? Mm, no, I'm not so. Okay, you can do <laughs> no, it any sort of belay. You can actually do it just with the rope. And I've done it just with the rope. And in fact, I, I don't have a problem, but it's safer and easier with a belay plate. But um, so some people are a bit scared to use it without a belay. But I've done it with just the rope. Yeah. So you, you wind the rope around your, your leg and you, basically, I suppose your leg is acting like the belay plate. Because How high it was? The, the rope going too fast. But well, I think that's how, great how fun. Was. Yeah. And if you go, if there's something which they call canyoning, does anyone know what canyoning means? No. Dope? No, it's not. Yeah. No. Hannah? No. Have you ever come across I, 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 can, I can start guessing and talking for two or three hours, but I'm not sure if I'm going to to say the right answer. Uh, I mean, okay. it, it, it came from, can, <laughs> from a canyon, but I don't know if it, it means exactly. to... Exactly. Uh, it's, well, I suppose you have waterfalls in canyons, but it's yes. when you abseil down waterfalls. And well, I've done this a easy. couple of times in Nepal, and I tell you, that is the most fantastic of the lot. You're, you've got the waterfall bouncing, the water falling on your head. Sometimes you wear a wetsuit, okay, because you get very wet, because you're basically abseiling down waterfalls. And it's wonderful. It's, it's very exhilarating. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's spell exhilarating. Uh, well, I'm not sure that's the right spelling. Uh, so water generate. falls upon you and you stand beneath the waterfall? Yes. What I would do is I will find some pictures and I will I will share some pictures with you to show you what it's like. But it is amazing. It's really, really wonderful. I can't recommend it. And you did it finally. Yeah, and it, I mean, the thing is, you're very safe. It doesn't help if you don't have a head for altitudes, okay? So, or a head for heights, maybe is a better way of putting it. Because you have to jump off the side of the rock to the waterfall, and you only have your rope holding you. So if you don't like heights, and you don't think you can do that little jump, then it might not be for you. But you are very safe because you're attached to these ropes. And if you fall, okay. you're not going to fall very far. Uh, how, firm, how firm is it attached? I'm not so sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have you have lots of uh, safety. Your, your rope is well attached. You have people holding onto the rope. If you fall, it's no more than just... A, maybe maximum a meter. Okay. It's a controlled descent. It's very controlled, yes. yes. So it's not as dangerous as you might think, okay? Um, I don't know where in India you might do uh, canyoning. Um, I think in Himachal. 
Yes, in Hibishal, I'm pretty sure because they have perhaps one of the best developed tourism I've come across yeah. in all India. And I think yeah. probably there. Yeah. And in Rishikesh, I think Rishikesh is the perfect place. Maybe not. You need hills, you need waterfalls, you need a fair a fair height of waterfall. In Nepal, there are quite a few places. And in front, near where I am here in Nice, I haven't yet been. And um, oh. Emmanuel um, Flausio in Italy is telling me that it's very, very exciting uh, canyoning sites um, in North Italy as well which perhaps I need to suss out. I might not have to go and explore. Okay. Okay, Nidhi, um, I think it's back to you. Okay. Okay, so shall I read? Yes, please read. Okay. Simpson, however, was still alive. He had survived the 150 foot fall despite his broken leg and had landed on a small ledge inside the crevice. When Simpson regained consciousness, he discovered that the rope had been cut and he therefore had to save himself. It was impossible for Simpson to climb up to the entrance of the crevice because of the overhead eyes and slack. Therefore, his only choice was to lower himself deeper into the crevice and hope that there was another way out. After lowering himself, Simpson found another small entrance and climbed back on to the glacial slope without food and with almost no water, crawling and hoping five miles back to their base camp. This involved the glacier, which was scattered with more crevices and lost it and almost completely did. Yes, he reached base camp only a few hours before he and then getting low. Okay, very Marianne? good. Your, your connection is, is being a little bit naughty, but I heard most of it. Delirious. Nidhi, what do you understand by delirious? No, dope. Do you know what delirious means? No, no. Hernan. Delirious. Delirious. Well, uh, when you're well, when your mind is playing is playing tricks on you, when you're not making um, sense, when you are in a state, no. in this case, that your 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 mind conditions are not normal, I and you are, and um, well, you are you are probably you are seeing things, you are imagining things, you are in a state of uh, delusion. Yep, you've described it very well, Nidhi. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. can hear. Okay. I mean, for one word, if there is one word for delirious, can you think of just one word that might... Illusion? Capture? Um, I think it's to do... I mean, when, when you are sick, okay, you're usually feverish and you display all the symptoms that Hanan described. Okay, you you might not okay. think that real is real. You 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 have crazy ideas, but it can also mean feverish. Yes, feverish. Okay. You, you can't see reality. Okay, it's something like that. When people see in oasis, they uh, feel like that there is water, but there is no yeah, water. I mean, they imagine you, water. For example, I don't know if Nidhi, you have ever come across anyone with malaria, because they will be yeah, delirious. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they don't really know what's happening. They're 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 they're, they're feverish. Unable they, like, to describe. Yeah. yeah. And then the very last word, mountaineering lore. Lore means uh, uh, 
stories that are full of incidents, uh, great incidents, something like that? Yes, exactly. Very good. Are there any other words that any of you don't understand? Yeah, yesterday you have explained it, but I forgot. Morians. You moraines, said it, but I... Okay. Morain. We talk about the moraines that are below. So in a glacier, it's the stones, the rocks that come okay. out from the glacier. Yeah. Okay. So the glacier is mainly made of ice, but there are also rocks within. And the rocks that come out from the glacier, we talk, we describe as moraines. Okay. okay. Any other vocabulary? No? Mm -hmm. No, for me it was just one of us, which I wanted to ask, delirious. Delirious, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so, could you uh, read the, the, the next section? Touching the Void in 2003. Uh, docodrama, survival, film about George Simpson and Sam Yeltsin. Disastrous and near fatal climb of Sua Granda. Critically acclaimed Touching the Void was listened in PBS 100. Greatest documentary of all times. The Guardian described this as the most successful documentary in a British cinema history production. The film star Brendan Maskey, S. J. Simpson, and Nicholas Aaron. Aaron, as a Simpson yet, and Ole Rail, as a Richard Hawking, uh, and uh, clam, cl combined uh, combined dramatization with interview with Simpson, Yeltsin, and Hawking. Simpson and Yeltsin doubled as their youngest uh, selves for long distance short of the snow footed color. Cal Colors of, of Sua Granda. The film was directed by Kevin MacDonald when they collaborated on the film in 2003. Simpson and Yeltsin hadn't seen one another for 10 years. During the making uh, of the film, the director and producers invited Yates and Simpson to return to Sua Granda in 2002. For the first time since the events of 19, 1985, Simpson, despite uh, finding the return emotionally difficult and experiencing post-traumatic stress syndrome on his return, eventually said that he was happy with the film and its uh, portrayal of the events. Yates, on the other hand, reported having no emotional response to return to Sula Granta and decided to have notice to have nothing to do with the film once he had returned from the mountain. Very good. Okay. What do you understand by docudrama? It's just uh, uh, a little bit entertaining and a little bit drama, just uh, compared to sing together. And uh, this uh, or movie can wait. Uh, you, you just uh, understand feeling how he suffered, how he get out of this crevasse. Drama is a little bit of a pity for him. Okay, but you can have a docudrama about many things. So the word docudrama is describing the type of film that it was. So you can see that it's made up of two parts. You've got docu and drama. So what's the difference, do you think, between a documentary and a docudrama? A do documentary is just uh, uh, the film which uh, uh, served as, uh, uh, as to uh, give us a story about, uh, uh, about events in, in the past. And, yes. Uh, 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 drama, and he, you just uh, 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 can understand the feelings, the person, the souls, how he suffered. You just can live 
uh, the suffering together with uh, with this personage. Yes, yes, I think I think you've got it. I mean, I think the main difference is that here we had actors playing the parts of the actual um, mountaineers some of the time. Um, and so they made it, they actually um, showed scenes where they reconstructed what has happened. Now, a documentary tends to be no reconstruction, it's just filming. I don't know, the, um, there's a famous one about the penguins in, uh, in, Art in, uh, um, in Antarctica, and it's just filming what happens. So there are no actors. The, the people that are shown on the film are actually the people who, you know, they're working there. They're not uh, pretending to be in. Whereas here we've actually got actors helping to reconstruct the scene. So it's based on what really happened, but it's not exactly what really happened because they had to reconstruct it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now the book, as well as the film, is is also highly acclaimed. It's it's almost become a legend now. I want to read a, a, good, uh, a good book. Um, Joe Simpson's um, book is very good. What do you understand, Dope, about uh, snow fluted? You look up this word. No, snow fluted uh, calories. I don't know what it was mean at all. Okay, it's really more to do with the way that the snow is carved. Often the wind in high altitudes. I've seen this. I've seen the most beautiful, what look like almost, not quite statues, but um, columns of snow that have been almost sculptured by the wind. So we would call that snow fluted where the, the snow has been shaped into very strange, beautiful shapes in the wind. Okay, and post-traumatic okay. stress syndrome, do you know what that is? Yes, because it's too difficult to recover after such a uh, experience. Yeah, it's the shock, isn't it? It's the, <laughs> of course. the trauma, the shock of what has happened there. Okay, now I see somebody at the bottom of my screen. I don't know who it is, because all I can see is half of their icon. Who is it that's hiding at the bottom there? I don't recognise, I only can see the scene of the sea now and the building. Who are you hiding? Who is it down there? Or are you just listening? You want to read? Is it Zaka? Lina, if she asks you, do you want to read? No, I don't know. They're, they're keeping very quiet. Okay, in which case, Hanan, would you like to read the next section, please? Sure, of course. Thank you. According to the film's end notes, Yates received a great deal of criticism from the mountaineering community for cutting the rope on his partner during the descent after the story of what happened to the climbers returned to England. Simpson has deeply accepted that Yates did the right thing and practically saved his life and has always defended him on that matter. The film received largely positive reviews with 93% of critics' reviews being positive on Rotten Tomatoes. Touching the Boy won Best British Film at the 2004 BAFTA Awards. The film was long listed for an Oscar Best Feature Documentary Award, but was not nominated as, uh, nominated as judges felt it was not a documentary, so did not qualify for an Academy Award. Peter Necht at the Industry Trade Journal in the wire call, called
calls it one of 10 incredible documentaries that weren't nominated for an Oscar. The BBC One's film 2011 included Brendan Mackey's performance as Joe Simpson in their top five actors who should have won an Oscar, along with Ingrid Bergman for Casablanca. Well, Anthony Perkins for Psycho, uh, Ralph Fiennes for Schindler's List, and Jeff Bridges for The Big Lebowski. Very good. So these were actors who didn't get their Oscar, but their performances were amazing. Okay. I'm not sure. Brendan Mackey's performance. I, I mean, I've seen the movie. It was good, but I'm not sure it was as good as Ralph Fiennes for Schindler's List, for example. Brandon Perkins for Psycho for that matter. And then, of course, he Berg. Maria, I'm sorry, but we are losing you there. We, we couldn't hear you. Yeah, I can hear this sort of like sound that sounds like a big wind that comes from time to time. No, but now it's, yeah. it's yeah. us, now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any vocabulary, any other? I have a question. Yes. I just uh, sometimes get confused. Uh... You get confused, sorry. Confused about what? In general, I think that he lives in a state of confusion, but maybe <laughs> what to be more specific, though. He's in Russia. Come on. Russia is a very confusing place if you don't know it. You, you are just defending <laughs> him. You like him. <laughs> I've been to Russia, so I know. <laughs> I haven't been to Argentina, but I have been to India, so. <laughs> okay then, maybe um, Nidhi, could you read the next this next paragraph here? Oh, okay, Marian. Yeah, but Dove has asked you what is the difference? I think mean and matter. Oh, uh, mean and matter. Where is that? In mm. the chat box. I don't Dove? think that, that I don't think that that's in the in the in the paragraph. Okay, we talk about means which we talk about um, way or um, method. Can be, means can, can mean that as well. And then matter is the thing. Is the thing. But I don't know your context. I'm not sure, um, but it depends on the context. If you can give me a context, context, then maybe I can explain better. Okay, okay. Don't cry, though, please. <laughs> 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 oh, that face! Oh, I, I, I can handle my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so one short paragraph here, Nidhi, okay. just to finish yeah. off about the film. Okay, box office. The film was released in theaters on 23rd January 2004 and grossed dollar $96,973 in the opening weekend. It went on to gross dollar four, uh, $4 lakh. Five thousand ninety-three. Oh, sorry, four crores. What are you saying? <laughs> no, Lucky is Indian. <laughs> yeah. Okay, have a look at the number of um, the number after the first comma. What is 45. that? Four. Mm -hmm. Four what? Six. Four crores. Four, four million. Five, four uh, four, million. Not crow. Four no, million. That's Indian as well. <laughs> For the rest of you, you don't know, okay. lakh and crow are very specific to India and Nepal only. I don't think any yeah. other country in the world uses them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. Four, four million. million. Four million and uh, really, I'm confused how to say it. Okay. Four million five uh, hundred uh, 
93 in america Perfect. and dollar 9 million uh, 29 uh, 29000 oh god 222204 mm -hmm. from foreign mm -hmm. okay 9 million 292200 204 from foreign markets for a for worldwide total of dollar 13 13,885,802. 13, yes. Uh, after 20 weeks. Music. Original music for the film was scored by Alex Hifas. The Kimbers reached the summit to the climax of Thomas Terrier's spam in the Elium. During one of the Simpson many deliriums, he experienced a very strong reminiscence of a Bonnie Am song he ate it thoroughly. Brown girl in the ring, at one point thinking, bloody hell, I am going to die to Bonnie Am. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, you might want to listen to the music uh, later. Because it's it's quite a famous uh, tune, and it. So me your motion. Brown girl in the ring, da 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 da, and it goes on and on in his head because he's delirious, yeah. So in his many deliriums, delirious, yes, he experiences a very strong reminiscence. What does reminiscence Old mean? memory. Remembering yes, of memory. old memories. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's Vinay who's hiding there, down there. Sorry, Vinay, I didn't know who it was down there. Okay, now, I've got a very interesting story here that was from um, the news. Wait a minute. Actually, yes. Okay, we're not going to have time for every post. Other thing, there was once very strange thing, except there's something about the Okay, I don't Marianne, like we cannot hear you. I don't like British children, and there was one story in the news. About Marian, we are not able to understand what you are saying. Can you hear me at all? Now we can hear. Oh, but, okay. Uh, okay, there was a story that was in The Guardian that really surprised me. So maybe, uh, Vinay, are you able to read? Or are you just hiding and listening to us? Maybe just listening. Hello, hello. 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 Yeah, Hello? Yeah. Would you Hi. like to? Hi. Hi. Would you like to read the paragraph that I've just put yes, yes, on the sure, screen? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, touching the void climber, bombarded, bombarded with abuse by school children, 25 May 2012. It is a thrilling tale of courage and survival that out to grip any school child. But Joe Simpson, a mountaineer whose big whose book details an agonizing crawl down a Peruvian mountain with a shattered leg has become embroiled in an unseemly row with people who abuse him online. GCSE English students studying touching the void for their exams have vented their frustration on Twitter. But the story of Trump Trump of the human will to survive in the face of almost overwhelming adversity was lost on the teenagers. <coughs> they dubbed him a crevice, condemned his work as boring, and he even claimed he would lead them to fail their exams. Okay, so this was a story more recently with obnoxious, horrible school children, okay? Um, who had been asked to read the book as part of their O-levels, okay? And they were bored with it. They didn't find it very interesting and they were very angry. They had been told they had to read it. 
do you understand what it means by embroiled? So the um, climber became embroiled in an unseemly row. Can I answer? Yes, go ahead, Dope. You just uh, became involved in something very yes. deeply. Yes, embroiled, involved. And what about unseemly, you know? Do you know what unseemly means? I think this is a word that in India... No, not, uh, not likely. I yes, think. yes. Uh, not yeah. very... Um, yeah, I mean, not, not uh, what you expect and not very respectable. It's, uh, Without notice. Yeah. Without being noticed. Yeah. Unlikely, unlikely, you can say, I think. In this context? In this context? No, it's, I, I don't, well, I don't know. I, I, it's not when, it doesn't mean that you that, that he got involved in, in, in a nasty discussion with this kid. Well, vented, okay, a vent. We have a vent, which is like a chimney, or it lets out hot air, air conditioning. express Okay. And they dubbed him. Does dubbed mean like that? You know, you can understand that. They've censored a lot of the, the, the bad words. Tell you what they are, but. You were breaking up, Marianne. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, dubbed. They dubbed him. They, let's see. Well, I can tell you what the W means. Crevasse wanker, I think they probably meant. So they said that his work was boring, but to dub somebody as something. Everybody? They called him a crevasse wanker. Okay. Now, who read last? It was Vinay, so we are now back to Dope. Is it your turn? I think it's Nidis. Okay, Hanan. Hanan, would you like to read the next? Yeah, yes, but it's not Nidis' turn. Sorry? Nidis' turn, no? The, I think that the, we, we just made a round, if uh, Nidhi should start, then dope at me and... Paragraph, please. Okay, do you want me to read? Yes. Okay. The Klimba responded the horrid kiddie tweets by telling them he had written the book to pee you off and told them he hoped they would <laughs> see it in blushes as it purse. The masses sent in their dozens as a student revised for their <laughs> for their <laughs> GC. <laughs> okay, variant. Okay. Revised for their GC as he has offered a wide range of criticism from his boring exploits to his literary style. One young lady wrote to him, your book, your book is the reason my entire year will fail our English exam. Learn to write, you illiterate fool. <laughs> Another said, your book is as and you should feel bad. Three chapters of crawling didn't inspire me to write about your book in my exam. It was ra rather boring, really. Another student said, hi Zoe, I had an exam about your book. I failed because of you. You owe to me. Another international student told him, I'm a student who learned English. You are stupid who fell down on the mountain. We are waiting you in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
phrase seething bilious acid pus. So, it's really horrible. I mean, these kids. And actually, I, I've given you the uh, link, and I really recommend that you read the comments because the comments are normal adults that just say, wow, these children are just so, so sad because. I mean, obviously, there's a lot to commend the book that, you know, nobody criticizes the book except these children. OK, so let's see. Oh, OK, I only have a few more lines here that I will put here. Um, uh, so, uh, OK, so, you know. Hello. Hello, Vinay. Can you read the last, the, the very end of this? Uh, which which one? Right at the end, a bunch of spotty school kids. <laughs> I still oh. haven't put it. We don't see it. Right at the so, end. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's still sending. Uh, there must be a slow problem here with the uh, 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 connection. OK, maybe I will read it to you if it doesn't arrive. A bunch of spotty school kids who can't read and can't pass their exams and who start calling me a cravat wanker. I find really quite amusing, actually, he added. I've never had children. I made it specifically impossible to have children and I'm being hassled by children. Maybe it serves me right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I've got the link. Maybe I haven't got the link here, but I will send you the link to that. Wait a minute. I should have the link because the comments also are very interesting to read because then you what get the... What is the exact meaning of hassle? Hassle. Um, hassle... Uh, to be worried, to be uh, annoyed by something. OK, I found it here. OK. So, yeah, if you go to this link, you'll get the comments made by the general public because this was an article in the newspaper and then uh, people made comments on it. And I don't I didn't see any that supported the children's point of view. There were adults feeling very sorry for these children that they couldn't find anything interesting in what had been written there. I have to say, I have found, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not young anymore, I have found I don't know. It's not quite as, uh, Adventures. Maybe they're interested. You know, what about maybe you're in India? Yes. Hello. You know? Your voice is breaking. Sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. Hello. Sorry. Ah, Where yeah, I can live? hear. You. You're you're in India, aren't you? Ah, yeah, yeah. I am in India. Yeah. Where where in India do you live? Uh, in Jaipur. Okay. Oh, you're also in Jaipur. Nidhi, you're there too, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. So your neighbours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but there are no big mountains in Rajasthan. Okay. Now, Dope, you're quite a long way from mountains too, yeah. aren't you? Yes. yes, and well, but you're in Buenos Aires, aren't you, Hanan? Or is that where yes. you're from? Yes. So yes, I am. you're quite, but you at least have the mountains in Argentina. That's right, isn't it? I can yes, yes, yes yeah. actually, we, we yeah. I mean, I, 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 I am a city boy, by my, but my, half of my family <laughs> lives in the south. Uh, so close to the Andes, so yes, I know right. mountains a lot. Yeah. So, have you ever been up high in the mountains, 
or just in the lakes getting your no, feet no 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 I, I have climbed it was not my 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 main interest but but i i i climb i i, I went there camping several times yes i i did it yes Okay, so you you perhaps have a little bit more sympathy and understanding for um, the climbers here, yeah? Because I don't know, people that climb up high mountains, they are a bit crazy, some of them. Bit of a crazy bunch. The ones to that climb, I know. No, to climb, to climb the, the way they do, yes. I mean, one thing yeah. is to start hiking and and uh, because I, I, I didn't use ropes or anything like that. I mean, they, they were uh, what we call picadas, little little roads where we, we could go. Even when they, it was not easy sometimes, but it was nothing compared to what these men did. I mean, you have to be uh, a, a very, uh, I mean particular person in order to do such a thing. I mean, you need to be built in, 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 in some way, your mind, your body. I mean, I don't know much about psychology of mountaineering, but I, I, I don't think that anyone just can do that. You need to be uh, really committed to do it. And I think that they know that they can die in any moment. Yes, yes. Um, the only mountaineer, serious mountaineer that I know, I actually have met a few times, is a Brit another British climber. In fact, of the same, well, he's a bit older than, um, than Joe Simpson. Um, and he's called Doug Scott. And he was the first British person to climb Mount Everest in the 1970s. And uh, Chris Bonington, I don't really know him. I've heard him speak a few times. But Doug Scott um, actually offered me a job at one point, and I, I know him a little bit. Um, and, yeah, he's a bit crazy. Yeah. He's broken most of the bones in his body at some point, falling down the mountains. He's had people that have had, you know, saved his life and... Um, he, he doesn't climb anymore, obviously, he's in his 70s now, <laughs> but uh, he still comes to Nepal um, quite every year and has a very good charity that um, I, I work with and uh, I know a lot about. But yeah, mountaineers can be quite uh, crazy. Often they are very introverts. Do you understand the word introvert? Yes, it's just a trait of... So uh, yeah. Characteristic of human being. Um, did you say yeah. afraid? Yeah. Sorry, dope. Um, introvert, introvert. Extrovert is just the traits of uh, of human being. It's who live in, mostly inside oui. of his, inside of his brain or inside of his head, right? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure because you're mumbling and I don't think it's my connection. I think you're doing like yesterday. You're um, eating your words and mumbling. Uh, maybe. Could you say what you just said but speak very clearly? It's just Hello. traits of human being. Okay, yeah. That kind okay. of people think, uh, uh, generally just think inside and very rarely yes. go outside. Exactly. You might say they're inward looking. Yeah. Who's self concentrated? Who's uh, yes. selfish? Yeah. They can be quite selfish, but not. It's not. Uh, introvert doesn't mean selfish because who is Doug satisfied Scott, with itself, Doug Scott himself. actually is, your, is not that way at all. If anything, he thinks very much about the people who have helped him and he that he's he does a lot to help uh, very, uh, help people so he's set up schools he's got health posts that function really well so his charity in nepal is very very effective it's small but very it does a lot of very good with very little and the problem with charities and maybe we can we can discuss this often they they cost a lot but there are some charities like his which actually spend very little on themselves and all the money goes to help and that's what i think is is very good about his work okay so he's introvert but i wouldn't call him selfish yeah okay 
so um, I've given you the links for further up site, and I'll put the forum. So if you haven't seen the movie, you might want to watch it because, as I said, it's mainly commentary, and the two British guys who are common, uh, who are doing the commentary speak very clearly and not very fast. And so you'll find it very easy to listen to. So, how did you find it? Did you find it easy to understand? Sorry, what part of your sentence? Did you I find the movie? Get... Did you find the yeah. movie? Yeah, yeah, easy of course. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Very yeah. easy. And I will also put the links to this article, and there's another article which we didn't have time for. And I have to think about what we're going to talk about tomorrow. I'm sure I'll find something interesting. Maybe we can talk about charities. Do they do more harm than good? Because this is a question we always have in our heads when we try to do good in poor countries. Sometimes maybe we are actually doing more harm. Certainly, um, those of you from India, I'm sure know all I don't know about Russia. Maybe we're quite original. It's two two two, Maria, and uh, no, no one of us can hear you. Okay, maybe it's time to say bye till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, let's try next uh, tomorrow's uh, Discord. Maybe it will be a world better. Well, you can either send me your suggestion. Or, as I said, I might talk about how charities may not do as much good as we would like them. Sometimes they can do more harm, I think, than they do good. We could say not charities, we could say foreign aid. Yeah? But if you send me a suggestion, then I will, I will see what I can do to accommodate you. Well, it seems to be a nice topic, what you are saying, Marianne. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting topic that I have some quite interesting thoughts about, having worked in a very poor country for 12 years. <laughs> no, no good deed goes unpunished. Exactly. Anyway, I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. See, you later, no. see you later. See you later, my friend. Bye.